Song number 590, Christ Be Our Light. Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people, light for the Longing for peace, our world is troubled. Longing for hope, many despair. Your word alone has power to save us. Make us your living voice. Christ be our light, shine in. Dear brothers and sisters, 40 days have passed since we celebrated the joyful feast of the Nativity of the Lord. Today is the blessed day when Jesus was presented in the temple by Mary and Joseph. Outwardly, he fulfilled the law, but in reality he was coming to meet his beloved people. Prompting, prompted by the Holy Spirit, Simeon and Anna came to the temple. Enlightened by that same Spirit, they recognized the Lord and confessed him with exaltation. So let us all, gathered together by the Holy Spirit, proceed to the house of God to encounter Christ. There we shall find him and recognize him in the breaking of the bread until he comes again, revealing, revealed in his glory. And so, as the light of the world, we remind ourselves of the way in which Christ illuminates our souls as we bless our candles this day on the presentation of the Lord. I want to walk as a child of the light. I want to follow Jesus. God set the stars to give light to the world. The star of my life is Jesus. In him there is no darkness. Night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. I want to see the brightness of God. I want to look at Jesus. Clear sun of righteousness, shine on my path. Show me the way to the Father. In him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine
Let us pray. Before we pray, why don't we raise our voices in uh, our Gloria. We'll sing our Gloria first. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give O God, source and origin of all light, who on this day showed to the just man Simeon the light for revelation to the Gentiles, we humbly ask that in, a in answer to your people's prayers, you may be pleased to sanctify with your blessing these candles which we are eagerly to carry into the pr that we eagerly carry into the praise of your name so that treading the path of virtue, we may reach the light which never fails. And we ask all of these things through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. Thus says the Lord God, Lo, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me. And suddenly there will come to the temple the Lord whom you seek, and the messenger of the covenant whom you desire. Yes, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts, but who will endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like the refiner's fire, or like the fuller's lie. He will sit refining and purifying silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi, refining them like gold, 
or like silver, that they may offer due sacrifice to the Lord. Then the sacrifice of Judah and Jerusalem will please the Lord as in the days of old, as in years gone by. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm is number 1196, 1196. Who is this King of Glory? this king of glory it is the lord who is this king of glory it is the lord o gates lift high your A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Since the children share in blood and flesh, Jesus likewise shared in them that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who through fear of death had been subject to slavery all their life. Surely he did not help angels, but rather the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every way, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest before God to expiate the sins of the people. Because he himself was tested through what he suffered, he is able to help those who are being tested. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. 
A reading from the, gospel, the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph took Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it was written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord, and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in accordance, in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should, he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all the peoples, a light for the revelation to the Gentiles and the glory for your people, Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him, and Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be contradicted and your gift a sword will pierce so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phinuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day with fasting and with prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Once in a while, I get, for whatever, for whatever reason, I, I receive um, other people's mail at my parents' house. I don't know how it happens, but um, it's, it's not even addressed to my parents' address, but yet it still, it still comes to their house, and it, and it comes in my name under other people's addresses. And one of the things that continually comes to that how our house month after month for some reason is a technology magazine that we get and, and in this technology magazine I I read an article <laughs> so you know what I do with other people's mail now <laughs> but I read an article that that told a story about a light bulb that scientists have invented that actually can purify the environment around us it acts as an air purifier and what it does is it captures the particles in the room and it and it ionizes them and it converts them and, and it purifies the room so they they kind of act as an air purifier in the in the room that the light bulbs are in and um, I, I thought what an incredible piece of technology that is but what a great example for us today about about what it means to be the light of the world and how how Jesus Christ is that purifying light in our life. When we allow the light of Christ to shine forth from our hearts, it has an effect 
on the environment around us. It has an effect on the people that we see each and every day. The light of Christ that burns bright within our hearts from the very day of our baptism has an effect on the environment that we experience. Now we can choose to allow that light to shine forth bright in the world, or we can choose to hide it under a basket. But I think, I think the more wise choice for us Christians is to allow that light to shine forth. We know that at times we live in an extremely dark world. That there are sometimes situations in our life that we pass through that make us feel like we are trapped or stuck in darkness. There are moments in our life where we feel like, like we're fighting a constant battle against those darker forces that exist around us. And yet there are also those moments in our life where we can't help but sit in pure joy of the way in which the light shines forth in our life. That there are those bright moments as well. I don't know about you, but coming to church tonight, I couldn't help but smile because as I was traveling down the hill from St. Peter's, the sun was starting to set and I could feel the warmth of the sun for the first time and I had felt like six years, you know, that, that I could feel the warmth of the sun and, and it just brought a smile to my face because I, I knew that that was a gift from God for us today. I knew that that was a blessing that God had shared with me in that moment that I could experience his presence on this day when we celebrate the way in which Christ illuminates the world. He gave us that little gift of that warmth from the sun today. The sun continues to shine forth in, in so many beautiful ways in our life, whether that be the interactions that we have with our relatives or our friends. The light shines forth in, in every little a gift that we give to somebody else. We allow that light to shine forth when we respond generously to the call that God has placed in our hearts to respond generously in our vocation, whether or not that means as a parent or a single person or simply a child of God. He has called us to something very special. God has called us to something very special, and it always involves allowing that light to shine forth. And so as we come together today, I think it is such a gift for us to celebrate this beautiful feast of the presentation of the Lord. As, as, as Mary and Joseph brought Jesus into the temple to be presented to, to the priests, we celebrate the wonderful gift of the way in which Simeon and Anna both were able to recognize Jesus for who he was a true gift to the Gentiles, a light to the world. We celebrate that gift in our life today by the example of our candles that our servers did such a great job today of lighting during our liturgy. And we, we thank you for your efforts because you, you, you gave us a great example of, of what it means to have Christ, the light of the world, in our midst today. As we gaze upon this altar, may these candles for the rest of this year serve as that reminder to us that God is always with us and that the darkness of struggle, the darkness of difficulty will never prevail over the light of Christ. And as we look at the candles in the background, we can't help but take our gaze uh, a little higher as we gaze upon the cross of Jesus Christ as we gaze upon our salvation that was won for us through Jesus Christ's sacrifice a moment that many people would say is a moment of darkness for us as Christians becomes that most perfect moment of light for light shines forth most brightly in that dark moment as Jesus bowed his head and died for us on the cross for we know that only three days later, that glorious moment, that moment of resurrection that, that we all wait for in our lives was, was, uh, was won for us in that moment when Jesus rose from the dead. 
We have a lot to be proud of as Christians. We have a lot to be thankful for as believers in Jesus Christ. Let us allow the light that burns brightly in each one of our hearts to shine forth this next week, to burn brightly so that all may know that the glory of God really does live within each one of us. Let us stand, and as people who have the confidence in our faith, we have the courage and the freedom to pray our creed that our Savior, that, that we were taught uh, to pray from little on. And so let us pray our creed together as, as we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. We have seen the salvation of our God, and so now let us pray for the needs of all God's people here on earth. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For your holy church, may we be a light to all the world, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of every country, that they may govern wisely and justly according to God's law of grace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who suffer from the, from the cold of the winter season, that they may know warmth, light, and relief, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our, our archdiocesan synod, synod planning, may we seek the messages that God has sent and plan accordingly for the future of the church in southeast Wisconsin, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our African-American brothers and sisters, as we celebrate the 25th anniversary of the National Day of Prayer for the African-American and African family, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all young families in our community, that they may know of our support and our care for them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially for Ruth Gongarick, Philip Langenacker, Kathleen Petey, and Alice Promen, who died this past week, and for those remembered at this Mass, living and deceased of the Coleman and Casper families, living and deceased of the Mertens and Crowley families, and Alex Simon, we pray. For all of our personal petitions that we hold in the silence of our hearts this day, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, source of all light, enlighten our minds and our hearts with your grace, and hear these prayers that we bring to you through Jesus Christ, your only begotten Son and our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing our preparation song, number 457, Sing of Mary. Sing. 
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the offering made with exaltation by your church be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray. For you willed that your only begotten Son be offered to you for the life of the world as the Lamb without blemish who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for your co-eternal Son, was presented on this day in the temple and revealed by the Spirit as the glory of Israel and the light of the nations. And so we too go forth rejoicing to encounter your salvation and with the angels and saints praise you as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by this same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, your most, her most chaste spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely on for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jerome, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Now thank you, and let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Pray. By these holy gifts which we have received, O Lord, bring your grace to perfection within us. And as you fulfilled Simeon's expectation, that he would not see death until he has been privileged to welcome the Christ. So may we go forth to meet the Lord, ob obtain the gift of eternal life through Christ our Lord. Just um, a couple of quick announcements I'd like to make. Um, the first one is, you know, we talked a little bit today about letting your light shine forth. Um, and just uh, I want to emphasize the fact that you know, keeping holy candles in your house is a very common practice for us as Christians. And so, if it's been some time since you've had a holy object like a candle in your house, um, we just encourage you to do that. Go out, buy yourself a candle. I know uh, they have them at a number of different places around town. And, uh, and have it blessed by a priest. 
and, um, and place it in your home. And on those dark nights or those difficult moments, um, allow that light of Christ to shine forth in your home so that everyone may see uh, the goodness of God in the world, even at your, at your, at your residence. Um, the second thing I'd like to emphasize is that um, there's, uh, on the bulletin cover this week, you'll notice that there's a day of healing coming up here at Holy Family. You may have heard about it already, but I think it's important that as, as we as Christians prepare to uh, share those gifts that God has given us, we ourselves must first be healed. And so this is a wonderful opportunity for you to come together uh, to join our community and other people um, from, from Holy Family uh, who are interested in receiving that spiritual healing, with, uh, that, that healing that comes forth from a good relationship with God, with ourself, and with others. And so just invite you to be a part of that very special day. Bishop Hine will be here for part of the day, and we have a couple of other great speakers that are going to be part of, of that day. So we just encourage you to, to register for that event as well. And finally, uh, this, this past Thursday, you know, as a community, we celebrate the good things of life, but we also celebrate the difficult ones. And uh, I don't know, for any of you who know the Medina family in town, they had just suffered the loss of of, uh, of their son. Um, Jerry Medina passed away. He was 27, and he was killed in a car accident. And so I just ask everyone in the community this next week to please pray for them. Um, I, I married Jerry and his wife, Meredith, uh, just 16 months ago. And so please, uh, please keep them in your prayers. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying God with your life. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing our closing song, number 572, The King of Glory. The King of Glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. Who is the King of Glory? How shall we call him? He is Emmanuel, the promised of ages. The King of Glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open Open the gates before.